Hi guys, you're with Barry here, and uh, it's my pleasure to welcome three-time Mayor of Cabrera, Jorge Cavoli. Jorge, thanks for joining us. Thanks for coming to my house. It's uh, a pleasure. Always welcome. It's a busy place, and uh, understandably, with all the uh, things you have to take care of for Cabrera. Jorge, I, I appreciate you taking the time from your busy schedule, but you, you know how uh, a handful of us, including yourself, are passionate about Cabrera and where it goes. Um, I'd really love, because not many of my subscribers know, tell me a little bit about your past, your family's past, and your, you know, how this all came to be on the North Coast. Well, I'm the son of an Italian immigrant that came here in the late 50s, mm -hmm. and he married to my mother, which was the daughter of a farmer in the area. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they bought property here for, for farming, basically, mm -hmm. which eventually turned to be land that has uh, potential tourism besides mm -hmm. the farming potential they they had so we settled here in the area we like it here and uh, we went to the capital to Santo Domingo uh, to go to school to go to college and then came back here to to help this area you know so you attended and, your and I have college? to say that at the time we decided to, to come back here nobody was much willing to come because there wasn't much happening here you know so one of the reasons why we decided to come back here after going to school and going to college is to help you know with the knowledge with the education we got you know to help this you know get going you know mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons i finally ended up uh, in politics how did you master english so well i picked most of my english at regular school you know like every kid does you know Mm -hmm. You go to school here and you get a basic uh, basic lessons of English, you know. And uh, I picked most of my English, I picked it up at school. And I used to travel every once in a while to the United States. And I went once to a school, an academy in uh, New England, but that was only for like 45 days, you know. Okay. So yeah. And I've been practicing with the foreigners here and, you know. What was the actual moment that shifted your thought about wanting to become mayor that's a big decision and it's a lot of responsibility yeah it's a very intense uh, and demanding position you know but I thought that at some point the youth had to kick in you know normally the position of mayor was uh, run by older people you know mm -hmm. I think the the youth of this country is acquiring a different view you know mm -hmm. and uh, I was part of that vision I think you know and that's why I decided to to get involved in politics you know to make things happen you know that this is the only way you can actually kick in you know where decisions are taken and and uh, I wanted to help with, you know, the vision I acquired, you know, here and, and out of this country, you know, and I wanted to to get involved also because I wanted to to push the town towards the tourism mm -hmm. model, you know. Was there anything different about your reason for running for a third successful time versus your first time? running for mayor was there a different motive was there a different did you learn from did you did you what inspired a you know a third term I mean it's a lot of work once you get involved in this you know mm -hmm. you have new projects you know and uh, sometimes you don't have the time to finish those projects you know mm -hmm. and uh, I wanted to enforce the vision I had toward tourism you know and that takes time so it has been basically the same motivation you know to help mm -hmm. the town, uh, to give a different vision to the town mm -hmm. uh, that had, to a certain extent, that had made Cabrera stand out from our neighbor towns, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is one of the, the most important reasons why I decided to participate in politics and to, you know, to keep going for, for several terms. Describe some of the key issues that Cabrera is currently facing. In what term? In terms of 
how to position its growth properly so it doesn't fizzle over time like many destinations do about crime about where you see Cabrera's economic future over the next five to ten years I think we have uh, some strong challenges you know mm -hmm. basic infrastructure security and environment okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think these aspects are linked to our economical development not only in the depending on the growth of tourism but we are a uh, a very strong area in in farming you know mm -hmm, absolutely so I think we have to to look in that direction basic infrastructure security and environment and this is why I have had you know several meetings of the with the society here even with the foreigners to get support you know to claim from the government for, from the federal government these type of solutions that are not exclusively in our hands you know mm -hmm. With the federal government, we have to work together with it for the solution of the uh, basic, you know, infrastructure and services like power and and water, also security. In the environment part, we have more responsibilities, more direct responsibilities, and that we are working on it now, you know. And uh, but I think we have to look in that direction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In, in other words, you feel. To retain Cabrera's, you know, sustainable growth, it, it, it's not a boom that's town. That's the key. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And do you agree with me? And uh, I've only been here eight years. I've known you seven, and uh, my family is very proud to call you a, a friend as as well as uh, a public official. But what's the key to maintaining that steady growth? Like so many towns become boom towns and then fizzle. Yeah. You know, and, I understand. and I've lived in a few of them. Um, I don't even know if you're aware. It's it's uh, we're going on 20 years in the DR, eight in Cabrera, but in total, it's getting close to 20 for myself. And I've seen, uh, without mentioning names, so many towns that have boomed, and then five, eight years later, they fizzled because they overbuilt. Yeah, not only overbuilt. I think we're missing something in the country. I think we forget about basic aspects that are needed to have a sustainable growth not only mm -hmm. in the tourism you know in general you know the society the town the people of the town we need to have basic infrastructure we need to have basic services we need to have a good environment and we need to have security okay if you don't have this if you don't improve these areas, people are going to come here. People are going to be fascinated by the by the natural beauties that we have in the area. But at the end, if we don't solve these problems, if we don't improve the so the solution of these problems, mm -hmm. at some point, people will get disappointed. You know. Mm -hmm. Because if you want to run, let's say you want to run a hotel, okay? Let's say you have a house. If you have to, to provide yourself power, water, security, this is not how the, work, how the world works, you know? The, 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 the city, the federal government has to provide that to the citizens, you know? Mm -hmm. Because it makes life so expensive here and so low quality, you know, that people at some point get tired of this you know and we have to that's why we're working on that you know we believe we have to in any situation in any city in any part of the world okay you need to have your basic conditions solved in order for the society you know and the tourism and 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 you know to grow that's what i think till next time this is barry and dr catch you on the other side Bye.